Tale fifteen of Grim Tales Made Gay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bologna Times. Grim Tales Made Gay by Guy Wetmore Carroll. How a Cat Was Annoyed and a Poet Was Booted. A poet had a cat. There is nothing odd in that. I might make a little pun about the muse. But what is really more remarkable, she wore a pair of pointed patent leather shoes. And I doubt me greatly whether, ere you heard the like of that, pointed shoes of patent leather on a cat. His time he used to pass writing sonnets on the grass. I might say something good on pen and sward, while the cat sat near at hand, trying hard to understand the poems he occasionally roared. I myself possess a feline, but when poetry I roar, he is sure to make a beeline for the door. The poet sent by scent, all his patrimony spent. I might tell how he went from worse to worse, till the cat was sure she could, by advising, do him good, so addressed him in a manner that was terse. We are bound toward the scuppers, and the time has come to act, or we'll both be on our uppers for a fact. On her boot she fixed her eye, but the boot made no reply. I might say couldn't speak to save its soul. And the foolish bard instead of responding only read a verse that wasn't bad upon the whole. And it pleased the cat so greatly, though she knew not what it meant, that I'll quote approximately how it went. If I should live to be the last leaf upon the tree, I might put in, I think I'd just as leaf. Let them smile, as I do now, at the old forsaken bough. Well, he plagiarized it bodily and brief. But that cat of simple breeding couldn't read the lines between, so she took it to a leading magazine. She was jarred and very sore, when they showed her to the door, I might hit off the door that was ajar. To the spot she swift returned, where the poet sighed and yearned, and she told him that he'd gone a little far. Your performance with this rhyme has made me absolutely sick. She remarked, I think the time has come to kick. I could fill up half the page with descriptions of her rage, I might say that she went a bit too fur. When he smiled and murmured, Shoo! There is one thing I can do! She answered with a wrathful kind of purr. You may shoo me, and it suits you, but I feel my conscious bid, me as tit for tat to boot you, which she did. The moral of the plot, though I say it as should not, is, an editor is difficult to suit. But again, there are other times when the man who fashions rhymes is a rascal and a bully one to boot. End of How a Cat Was Annoyed and a Poet Was Booted